Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the IGN Pro League. My name is Total Biscuit. I'm going to be bringing you a fantastic matchup right here. It's going to be between Star Life. Yes, yeah, Star Life, a fantastic player. And the one and only Kiwi Kaki. Two very creative players in their own right. Two very highly ranked players in their own right. This is guaranteed to be an absolute blinder. I hope you guys are ready to roll because I certainly am. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Zelnaga Caverns. This will be the arena for today's bloodbath, and I can assure you that there will be violence. There will be destruction, explosions, fire raining down from the sky, all manner of awesome things. I bring you Star Life from the team Complexity Gaming. He is in the green trunks, and he is playing Terran up to the northeast of this Zelnaga Caverns map versus his opponent, Kiwi Kaki. In the yellow trunks, he's from Team Root. He's to the southwest, and he is playing Protoss. Both of these guys extremely creative and very accomplished players, both coming off a a series of tournament wins and high placements lately. Star Life, perhaps most well known for the so-called Star Life Drop, which is usually used against the Zerg and involves dropping Marauders into groups of Banelings at the front in order to soak up most of the damage and prevent the Banelings from destroying the Marines and tanks behind them. Kiwi Kaki, known for his inventive mothership play, particularly also against Zerg, where he was employing the so-called Archon Toilet an awful lot, a maneuver that does no longer work, unfortunately, which involved using a Vortex to suck Zerg forces in and then throwing some Archons in afterwards. As they popped out, the entire Zerg force would explode because the Archons would all fire at once and splash damage everything. Was they be on the same pixel on the screen? Not really intended, and that's something that got fixed in patch 1.3, much to the disappointment of sp some spectators, but much to the relief of many, many Zerg players. Whatever the case, Kiwi Kaki, not so great against Terran, but I would certainly not count him out. I'd say that he's Protoss versus Zerg is perhaps his most powerful matchup. He has a great record in that regard. We'll find out as to whether or not he can keep up with Star Life. Refinery going down, and Barracks coming down for Star Life as well. Now, usually, since we're not getting a refinery all that early on, I wouldn't necessarily expect to see an early Reaper, although it is certainly a possibility you could get it out a little bit later on. Reaper's becoming more and more popular in terms of openings for Tevin players. They allow you to scout. They can deny scouting from your opponent. They can catch probes and shoot them down before they get to the base. And, of course, they can jump into the back of the base and do a little bit of economic harassment as well. Great for map control. However, I would probably not say we're going to see that, honestly, since he was a little bit late with this refinery. Coming down with a tech lab, I probably expect marines and marauders maybe for an early little bit of aggression. Very popular mix against the Protoss, particularly when you go marauder heavy and grab your stim as well, which I'd also expect to see coming here, because if you look at that, you'll see that he's almost, almost up to what he needs. In fact, that's almost perfect timing right there for a stim. Will he go into it? Looks like it's very there you go. Stim coming up for him, and of course it takes a little bit longer now to bring the stim up since patch 1.3, so it's something you want to bear in mind. There we go, another gateway coming down, and has been successfully scouted by Star Life. We'll have to see what Kiwi Kaki can really do there. Chrono boosting out the warp gate research, wants to get that on the field as quickly as possible. A single assimilator down, always possible to see some early four gate aggression. That's a possibility you should always bear in mind. However, we're not seeing any real signs of that right now. You never know, Kiwi Kaki not really known for going aggressively into a four gateway play and trying to end the game early. He's much more of a macro player, an economic player. He likes to hang back, he likes to get his forces running and get his tech on the field. Star Life right now. Marauders on the way out. Second barracks and third coming down for him as well. It's the kind of thing you want to see from a Terran player at this stage of the game. That three barracks approach. Very, very common. A very convenient way of doing things. And Kiwi Kaki placing down a sneaky pylon. Trying to keep an eye on whether or not his opponent's going to take his third base. Obviously, that's not going to happen right now. But it could happen later on in the game. And also give him an opening where he'll be able to deploy some units in the middle of the map if need be. Kiwi Kaki pushing forward right now. Gateway's on the way. Have a look at the economy right now. Slightly in favor of Kiwi Kaki, though not by much, but we are looking for an expansion right now from Kiwi Kaki. That'll give him the lead. No real signs of that right now from Star Life. He doesn't have the money for it. He's pumping out units from all three barracks, so that's going to soak up the majority of his income. So I wouldn't expect to see a command center for a little while, especially not with a Ghost Academy coming down. It's a quite a nice early Ghost Academy there. Throw it down, get some ghosts in the mix, and in the meantime, however, 
Kiwi Kaki is not hanging around. A little bit of aggression coming in. And let's see how much damage he can really do with this. Snipes off Marine, looks for the second one. Here comes the rain of fire from the Marauders. The stim pack is not available as of yet. It will be very soon, however. Takes the Marauder out as well, and Kiwi Kaki driven away. In terms of units lost, eh, slightly in favor of Star Life. Not a big deal, though. Two units to three. I wouldn't be all that concerned about that. And a couple of Zealots being warped in as well. Kiwi Kaki perhaps looking for yet more aggression, but not showing any signs of that. He's falling back almost immediately. Now the stim's up, so Star Life has this window where you can do a lot of damage and concussive shells on the way up as well for the Marauders. Very useful, considering the amount of Zealots that are in play. Marauders, very effective early game against the Protoss. They can nail down pretty much anything, especially with stimming concussive shell. Now we finally see the expansion coming up. However, he's a good minute and a half behind his opponent in that regard. So Kiwi Kart is going to have a nice window where he's going to be able to really pull in the income and Star Life's going to be rather restricted in what he can deploy, particularly since he's throwing ghosts out on the field as well. Fairly pricey, as you can see there, 150 gas, 150 minerals, and he's doing this off a single refinery, bear that one in mind, so he is really short on gas. I would not expect to see any more than one ghost at this stage of the game as a direct result of that, because of course he needs to get the marauders on the field as well. Now finally starting off that second refinery and it's an interesting play by him to go for the early ghost even with only one refinery. Let's see how effective that is. Goes to the field right now. EMP is not charged, but it will be when he gets in there. The question is, how much damage could he really do if he attacks right now? Let's keep an eye on him. Let's have a look at what Kiwi Kagi's got. He's got five sentry, three stalker, three zealot. Yeah, I think that Star Life can do a lot of damage here if he's able to land that ghost in. Now, bear in mind that Kiwi Kagi, as far as I'm aware, knows that the ghost is coming. So, we will certainly find out. Will he be able to split his forces correctly? It's going to come down really to force field placement here as to how effective or ineffective this attack is. And there we go. There's the split right here. A good play there by Kiwi Kagi. Takes five Marines for three. Might lose a single Zealot, but that shouldn't be too big a deal. And Marauder raining it down. Takes the Zealot out and a Sentry annihilated as well as another force field. And many Marauders gutted there by Kiwi Kagi. A good engagement for him. A solid defense as Star Life sent packing. Now, the EMP was not, as far as I can tell, deployed. No, indeed, it was not. It wasn't rained down on his opponent. It wouldn't have done too much anyway. So he didn't waste the energy. He's pulling back. He's going to save up for a second EMP. And Kiwi Kaki looking for a counterattack right now. So a smart play by Star Life to pull back and keep that EMP because it could be critical in this defense if Kiwi Kaki is able to get in here. Uh, we're looking at six Zealots, five Stalkers, and three Sentries coming in from him. So a lot of damage. Check Selnaga Watchtower. Nothing sneaky around here. Bunker's on its way up. However, Kiwi Kaki is making that push. Good scout there by Star Life. He sees what's coming in. This EMP is going to be crucial. And it looks like he might even be able to rain down a second fairly quickly. Great EMP there by Star Life. And there's the pursuit right here. And he decides to stick the boot in and do as much damage as he can. Takes one Zelda, takes two. Takes a number of Stalkers out as well. Marauders are taking an awful lot of fire. However, Kiwi Kaki cannot break that line right now. Zealot's coming in to reinforce. However, Star Life's getting nowhere near those. Driven all the way back to his base. But good defense there. Very economical by him. And actually, Kiwi Kaki losing a significant number of units. Star Life with good defense. Bunkers coming down right now. So I'll have to wait for the Colossi of Kiwi Kaki to come out in order for the next attack to come down, I feel. Simply because it's going to be too hard to break that force right now. Extended Thermal Lance on the way up. Colossus on the way up right now. And actually, Star Life is in a little bit of trouble right here because he doesn't have even a factory, let alone a starport, in order to deal with those Colossi, get the Vikings out, snipe them off at long range. He doesn't have that right now. And bear in mind that Kiri Kaki must be well aware of that. He's had an observer all over the place. He's certainly going to find out shortly. Didn't spot the factory, but he will. He's going to be aware of exactly what his opponent can do. And Star Life actually deploying a missile to it as well. Make sure that there's no observers coming into this area. And, of course, that will help him in any defense against the Colossi if they happen to get that close. It's fairly unlikely that they will, though. Bear that in mind. Colossi with a range upgrade have nine range. And these have seven. So I wouldn't be uh, too concerned for... Kiwi Kaki right now. He's not going to go in that close with the Colossi. I get them picked off by missile turrets. That would be a little bit embarrassing. That's not the kind of caliber play we'd expect from somebody like Kiwi Kaki. Once again, Star Life pushing forward. Looking to see how much damage he can do right here. Eight Marauders, 19 Marines, and a Ghost. That's a lot of damage he's going to be able to rain down. Bear in mind, however, there is a Colossus. There's a second one. Looks like it's going to be complete by the time these guys get in there. A lot of these units are actually injured as well. And no Medivac support. That's going to be problematic. He does have a Ghost in the mix, so he will be able to land an EMP. Looks for the 
flanking maneuver to make that happen. He's almost got enough energy for two right here. Looking for it. And there we go. However, that EMP was utterly ineffective. Starlife was not able to do anything with it at all. Reigns it into the minute, middle of the forces. And the middle of the forces have already backed off right here for Kiwi Kaki. Now pushing Starlife back. Since he's really got nothing he can do to deal with those Colossi. Starlife needs to leave immediately. He falls back and loses a number of Marines and takes a Marauder with him as well. Kiwi Kaki unstoppable right now. However, Starlife looks like he's got the micro management over hand, raining it down on those Vanguard units, taking him out. But still, Starlife taking horrendous losses right there. And that pretty much equalizes him with Kiwi Kaki. And Kiwi Kaki's economy has been much stronger for a long period of time. So he can afford those losses. Now we have to see that, honestly, Starlight's going to do something about those Colossi. How's he going to do it? Another Starport coming down. I can only expect to see Vikings coming out very, very quickly. In the meantime, however, Kiwi Kart is going to vary things up. He's got two more Gateways coming down and a Dark Shrine. Plus, he's going to level two ground weapon upgrade. So, pretty much his upgrades almost match up to Kiwi Kaki right now. Kiwi Kaki has an armor advantage, but it's not huge. There we go. Medivac's finally on the field. That will certainly help him with this force. Although, bear in mind, those Colossi still there. They're still a great, great danger. No drops right now by Starlife. He only just got his Menevax available. I have to wonder if he'll try to actually get aggressive with those drops at some point in the not-too-distant future. And we will keep an eye on that to make sure that he's not doing anything of the sort. No doubt Kiwi Kaki will do the same thing. He has control of this Zelnaga Watchtower, so if his opponent decides to expand around here, he's going to know. He's going to see it coming a mile away. A third Colossus on the field now for Kiwi Kaki. This is going to be dangerous right now for Starlife. He needs to get those Vikings out. That's exactly what he's doing. Double reactors down on the starport. That's quad Vikings coming out. A lot of firepower, and that's interesting. A empty medevac now moving in. I have to wonder if that's it is, by the looks of it, going to force Kiwi Kaki to pull back because he's thinking a drop's coming in, and there's actually a bare minimum defense right there. There you go. Pulling back to uh, this expansion over here. Just keeping an eye on things. There was nothing in there. So Starlight faking a drop and also getting some interesting scouting information. Keeping an eye on where his opponent actually is right now. No use for the factory, so being used as a scout. However, lots of upgrades still coming in for Kiwi Kaki. And the economy is still in favor of him as well. And he's going to be able to transfer a significant number of drones to the gold mineral expansion. And we do not see Starlife expanding yet. But he does have a oil command center coming up. So he's going to look to expand in the not-too-distant future. However, once again, Kiwi Kaki with the economic advantage. A lot more gateways available. Kiwi Kaki can solidify his forces on this map and can go in there. Bear in mind, there's not a huge number of Vikings either. Five Vikings out of four Colossus with Stalkers on the ground as well. No Blink available as of yet. He's actually gone for Charge instead. A smart maneuver to soak up a lot of damage from those Marauders and of course negate the fact that they have those slowing shells, the concussive shells that will be raining down on him in the not too distant future. Kiwi Kaki reinforces with Zealots right now and we're looking for a push once again. Scan by Starlife looking for observers by the looks of it. Doesn't find any. Another scan going down using an awful lot of them. Here we go. And in the meantime, however, look at this. We've got some Dark Templars sneaking in there. And we just got to keep an eye on how much damage they can do. So in the meantime, Starlife with an engagement. And the force field's not placed all that effectively. Starlife not losing too much. Raining him down with the Zealots. Rip suit one looks for the second right here. And the engagement's still looking in favor of Kiwi Kaki, however. In the meantime, look at this. Kiwi Kaki gutting the middle line of Star Life and Star Life really can't do an awful lot about it right now. Once again, Star Life looking a little bit distracted. Here comes the EMP, takes out the Vanguard, rings it down, brings a few sentries down, but still, Star Life's gonna have to back off that entire mineral line. Has been absolutely devastated. 14 and 13 kills by those Dark Templar. That is ridiculous. That's incredibly powerful by him. Looks to take the engineering bay out. In the meantime, raise it down on the Nexus. Nexus shields are down. Kiwi Kaki drives him away once again. Minimum damage done. Loses a Colossus, but snipes out not one, not two, but three Vikings. Kiwi Kaki looking very good right now once again. Medivac's taken out. That engineering bait is gone. Reactors are getting gutted. Look at how effective these have been. Unbelievable. And reactor taken out. The second reactor taken out as he tries to immediately rebuild it. That is not good for him at all. There's the scan. Rains it down. Brings down one Dark Templar. Looks to take the second. The second one finally goes. But how much damage did those DTs do? Oh, wow. That was absolutely brutal by him. Kiwi Kaki now with a critical economic advantage. 61 harvesters to 32. His forces are looking very strong. The engagements went in his favor pretty much every time. And this could be the final push right here for Kiwi Kaki. And there you go. In comes the aggression. Rains it down. Those Marauders will not be able to hold the line. No way. Look at that. Ripping through there with a plus two weapons upgrade. There is nothing those Marauders can do to stop the unstoppable. And that is what they are. The unstoppable advance of the Colossi right here. 
Engineering Bay? I think not. Expansion? Nope, not gonna happen, I'm afraid. Kiwi Kaki holds that line. Excellent Blink Stalker micromanagement all over the place. Very rapid placement. Loses a few stalkers, it does not matter. Good game! So, ladies and gentlemen, right here, the Kiwi Kaki takes the first in this best of three series. Excellent play there by him, looking very cool and confident the entire way through. Starlife not really able to get aggressive, not employing any drops or any harassment. Kiwi Kaki left unchecked is a force to be reckoned with, and there you go. Excellent deployment and unit composition by him. The Colossi just could not be stopped. So many kills on pretty much all of them, but of course the critical moment, those Dark Templars sneaking their way in there. No missile turret on the ramp, a critical error by Starlife. And into the mineral line they went. No missile to it in the mineral line either. Couldn't even surround them with SCVs. He could do nothing. He was too distracted on the front line with that engagement. Kibikagi timed that perfectly. The harassment was excellent. And there you go. Okay, folks. Are you ready for game two? I certainly am. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. Right here on the IGN Pro League.